be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him watering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. 
They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, and then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 105, found on page 738 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read verses 1 through 6, and then verses 16 through 22, and finish with the latter half of verse 45. We will read responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. And the name will seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and O offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land, and his soul was supplied of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household. As the ruler of all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will. And to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from the book of Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our sequence hymn this morning is 529. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord God, my Redeemer. Usually once every three years or so, I drag out my worn copy of Anna Karenna and I begin to trudge through the most delightfully tragic story ever written. I see that some of you have read it. (laughs) 
The story of Anna and her extramarital affair with Count Vronsky is worth reading not just once, but many times over. I don't know why or how my love of Russian literature began, but Leo Tolstoy, who wrote Anna Karenina, has been called one of the greatest authors of all time, and I tend to agree. One of his famous lines from Anna Karenina that has always stuck with me has been the following. All happy families are alike, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. We all come from families, and most of us come from some sort of familial dysfunction. From some of us, this dysfunction may be more pronounced or obvious than in other families, and the pain and the wounds caused in our families of origins can take years to recover from. You may even need the help of someone outside of your family system at times to help you see things clearly and to begin healing. Our Old Testament text from Genesis today is the story of one of these very dysfunctional families. It's the story of Jacob's family. You remember Jacob from a few weeks ago? Jacob who tricked his brother Esau out of a birthright Jacob, who loved Rachel, but his adoring father-in-law father Laban gave him the eldest daughter Leah instead in a feat of trickery. Jacob then had to work seven more years in order to receive the love of his life, Rachel. And if you did not think that two wives were enough, each wife came with her own handmaid who was given to Jacob, Bilhah and Zilpah. Now Leah, are y'all following me? <laughs> now Leah bore Jacob six sons. Leah was the first and eldest daughter. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, and Judah. Bilhah and Zilpah bore Jacob four sons. Naphtali, Dan, Asher, and Gad. And his beloved Rachel bore him two sons. Joseph who we meet today, and later on Benjamin, his youngest son. These men formed the, tw the 12 sons of Jacob, formed the 12 tribes of Israel, eventually one day. But today we're introduced to Joseph, his son by Rachel, his beloved, and we're told that Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other children quote, because he was the son of his old age and he made Joseph a special robe. Most of us are familiar with family dynamics in one form or the other and we may have a little experience with jealousy. So you can imagine how the other boys felt about this little Joseph with his special robe. And we're told that Joseph was 17 years old. And we're told that Joseph, at the wise old age of 17, decided to bring a bad report of his brothers to his father. We, all of us, sometimes make and have made some unwise decisions. And this one was for Joseph. Instead of endearing his brothers to him, Joseph fed into their jealousy and their hatred of him. And you know the rest of the story. Joseph's brothers, when they saw him coming as they were out tending their flocks one day, decided to go ahead and kill him and then lie and say that a wild animal had killed him. His brother Reuben pleads with his brothers not to kill Joseph, but maybe throw him in a pit so they'd not be guilty of murder. They saw some Ishmaelites coming and decided instead of killing Joseph that they would just sell him and make a little money off of him. So they sold him and Joseph was taken to Egypt. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deed among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of his marvelous works. Psalm 105, 1 and 2. Thus begins our psalm for today. But I'm pretty sure that Joseph would not have been feeling any of these words that were later written by David. 
As you look back on Joseph's life, David was able to see how God used even this, Joseph being sold into slavery, and good came from it. The story is not just a story of family dysfunction at its finest, a story of hatred and division. It's a story of God working in the lives of humans, even humans who falter, who are ignorant, who are young, who fail, who sin, and a God who through divine intervention brings good. It's a story of salvation history and God's provision. God is a restorer. He's a God who takes death and brings resurrection. In the gospel text this morning, Jesus appears to the disciples as they were on their boat and he goes walking toward them on the sea. And we're told that they saw him and were terrified. Fear is a predominant emotion that serves as an obstacle in our lives and our service to God. We become fearful that maybe we'll be seen as too radical. We become fearful that maybe we will offend someone. We become fearful that we might be judged or cast out. Fear has always been a tactic to keep people in line, and it is one that I have chosen to employ in my own household at times. <laughs> the disciples are in this boat, and the waves are crashing, and they're fearful, and they see what they think is a ghost walking toward them. Peter steps out of the boat at Jesus' word, come. He stepped out of the boat. There's some legitimate things to be fearful of in this world. Things can harm us. But imagine what it would be like, what would it be like if we were able to just step out of the boat like Peter and just go when called? Peter got out of the boat and began walking, but then, but then, he looked around at the reality of the storm and the absurdity of the situation, the incomprehensibility of it all, and he began to sink. He became fearful, and he cried, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. My life has certainly not gone as I had planned. Lives rarely do. Joseph's certainly shifted in one proud moment with his special coat to being thrown into a pit, to being sold into slavery. He did not see that coming that day when he set out to find his brothers. He may have cried out at some point the same words that Peter did, Lord, save me but we don't know if he did. We do know that God was able to use this event in Joseph's life to bring good to the nation of Israel later. But at this point, there's no way for this 17-year-old boy could possibly know this. Next week, we'll get to hear more of the story, but when life comes at us, with all of its hurts, with all of its wild cards, with all of its tragedies, we know what we're told to do. In the words of Romans today, it tells us we're to cry out, Lord, save me. The tragedy on the island of Maui this past week is incomprehensible. It seems as if our world is increasingly having one natural disaster after another, notwithstanding the disasters that we bring upon ourselves. Let us pray for the people of Maui. Salvation comes from the Lord, we're told in Romans. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Step out of the boat when you need to. Call to him in your moment of need. Stay focused. Don't let fear overtake you. And one day, one day, you may find that you are walking on water too. Amen.
and feet together as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but of one being with the Father, through whom have all things are made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, He was crucified under conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel and be seated for the prayers of the people. Celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, 
including Karen and Laura Early, Patty Madison, Donna Green, Sharon Boyden, Kim Williams, Jackson Hill, Wes and Linda Hardy, Chris Campbell, Cindy Weber, Gerald and Emily Kay. And God of all wisdom, we praise you for wisely gifting us with sons and daughters. Give to each one a clear sense of your love, that they may feel your presence supporting them throughout the school year. Guide their choices, direct their quest for knowledge, bless their relationships, and use their successes and failures as opportunities to grow in understanding of who you would have them be. Continue, we pray, to shape them as branches of the one true vine, that they may ever walk in the way of Christ, growing strong in your spirit's love for all people and know the complete joy of life in you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
for sharing that. And you heard the first name Mark this morning on the prayer list. That's Mark Boyden. Mark this past week fell and hit a dock and broke his kneecap and his tibia. And that's why he's not with us. And we miss him. And anything else you want to share about that soon? Just I we appreciate your prayers. Yeah. So that's Mark. Um, there's a lot of, everybody on our prayer list, there's something serious going on. So we hold them all up and pray for them. Um, yesterday, some of the men met and had a breakfast and came down here to do a project. I know we noticed that they got uh, involved in a different project and all the things that have been here today. There was staff that had had a moment of lapse and needed to be replaced and uh, was taken care of. So thanks to Mike and Dale and Sam and who else was there? Okay. So thank you to the men. It's nice and cool here, but it may not have been true. So yeah. <laughs> you're thankful. <laughs> There is a sign-up sheet in the parish hall, and that will allow us to get to assemble the leaderboard for the, the competition, okay? And, and the, the winner takes all. And was already added to the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and for those of you who don't have all white, don't worry about it. You, know, you will wear a patriotic dress, or some of the ladies out here have their hats. By all means, wear them. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ their Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.